Hey guys, so this is a really great question. What does a case manager do? So that's gonna depend largely on where you work, what type of setting you work in, but the overall goal of a case manager is to um, assist the patient in reaching maximum medical um, improvement, basically after the acute setting, after they've been ill or in the hospital, whatever the case may be, we coordinate care along with your treating provider to ensure that you can get back to where you were either before your injury or if you are not going to be 100% ever, there is um, providers that do the evaluation to determine if you have a permanent disability or and give you an impairment rating score. Um, so a lot of that can look like coordinating care, making sure you have a treating provider on board. Um, if they do any referrals for specialists, I'm also assisting in that. I am submitting authorization for surgeries, medications, um, durable medical equipment, things like that. Specifically for me as a field nurse case manager, um, I work a lot from home, so I'm getting my referrals electronically through the company. And then my job is to then reach out to the patient or their attorney. If the attorney allows a client to contact, then I can still reach out to the patient as well. Um, I'm, I'm reaching out to their doctors, their jobs to see what kind of job they were on when they were injured, um, because that's gonna be the standard when I go and talk with their providers to see are they back there? Can they lift the 60 pounds that they were lifting before? Um, and then overall, how long do you think it will take for them to reach that medical um, maximum medical improvement? Um, there, I do reports to give my company basically an update every month on how this patient is doing. Um, and overall, my goal as a consulting um, nurse case manager is to um, provide feedback to the company that hired us. I think the largest difference between um, hospital case management and then field case management is that we are hired by the company. Um, so the client per se is your employer, your job. They hire us once a worker gets injured um, because my focus is in risk management for um, workers comp and injured workers. So they hire us to do the task. Um, overall, like for instance, when the case is closed, um, meaning the patient has reached their medical um, maximum medical improvement, they're back to work, there's no restrictions, things like that. I do a financial report at the end of the claim. And basically, I'm showing the company who hired us how we were able to save money either by using in-network providers, um, in-network DME accommodations, all kinds of things like that, um, MRIs that could have cost a thousand more dollars somewhere. Um, so overall, you can save anyone about 20000 to 100000 if you'd like more information on what a case manager does and what the job entails, I encourage you to visit the link below at nurse.org for more information. And also stay tuned for the rest of today's videos so you can learn what I do in a day as a field nurse case manager for an insurance company. So the short answer to this is no, there's not a lot of paperwork involved in my job. Um, and that's largely due to the fact that it's pretty much all online, electronically done. Um, any faxes I get, I get to my email. That is all set up once you get hired on. The company that I work for sent me um, some screens, desktops, a computer, laptop, everything I needed to get started and um, getting a phone number, a fax number, all of that was built into the hiring process. So there is no actual paperwork per se that I um, have to keep on me personally. However, because this job is so autonomous, meaning that there is really no overhead, my manager is in a different state, I'm the only Houston asset, my um, my mentor is actually in Dallas, um, so it's, it behooves you sometimes to keep some paperwork, um, especially when you're first starting out. So even though I said that there wasn't a lot of paperwork involved in my job, I did want to mention what paperwork I keep. It's very simple. I usually have three sheets of paper for each um, client or patient that I have for my caseload. And um, I usually start these sheets as soon as I get the referral so that I can have all of the information on file. So I have their name, claim number, the date of their injury, their date of birth, um, their adjuster. Um, we call them resolution managers in the insurance world. And then IW stands for injured workers. So their phone number and contact information. I'll usually write their email address up here, um, whatever pertinent information I have. A lot of these guys uh, retain attorneys or lawyers um, because they are injured at work. And so I have to reach out to their attorneys and I'll usually be either emailing 
their attorneys to ask for permission to talk to the injured worker. Um, most of them say no. <laughs> and in that case, I am talking directly with the attorney. I also list um, the contact for employers. So that might be their direct manager, but usually it's HR, someone who's heavily involved with risk management and health and safety of the job. Um, I get the title of the injured worker's job so that I know what kind of work they're doing. I get the job description so I know what physical recommendations and requirements are um, a part of their job. And then I also get their medical information. So that's their doctor, like their treating provider. In the state of Texas, you're required to have a treating provider if you are under workers' comp, and those are usually found in urgent cares. And then um, any specialists they're referred to, a lot of these guys have um, fractures and things like that that require orthopedics. A lot of them, I have a lot, a lot of PTSD. Um, I work with a lot of people that work overseas, so a lot of them have specialists. And then a lot of the time when I go on these doctor's appointment visits, there's a fee, usually ranging from about $50 to $100 per um, visit, and then any medical records from like the hospital. So the next bit of paperwork that I keep, this next sheet is called the initial interview questions. Once again, this I tailored um, over time working here. And this is what I reach out to the client and ask right away when I get the referral. So I wanna know about my patient. I wanna know what happened. How are they doing medically? I get all of their medical information. Um, I ask about any previous injuries they've had. I ask about marital status. I ask about house or apartment. I usually ask in this uh, direction as well. Do you have stairs in your home? Because a lot of these guys have injured a foot, an ankle, a leg, a hip, whatever the case may be, a lot of head injuries. Um, so when they're off balance with their coordination, that's important to know um, for safety reasons. Description of the injury, I usually write in this section here, along with any other pertinent medical information. Um, they have something called subrogation in the world of insurance. So if they do have multiple workers' comp injuries, that can sometimes raise some red flags, and that is important. I wanted to show you this last sheet of paper that I keep. So like I said, it's only three papers that I keep. And usually I email this. I, I, I put this in the form of an email for the adjuster and the employer after the um, office visits. And it's just the visit summary of what happened at the doctor's appointment. Um, what did they do? How was the injured worker? Were they able to drive themselves? Were they using crutches? Were they using a walking boot? What were they, what was their um, overall effect and status at that time? And then the medications they're taking. Did the doctor change anything at the appointment? Usually this is the time that I review the treatment plan with the doctor. I say, hey doc, does this look right? How are we looking as far as reaching the maximum medical improvement? Um, what did they find on x-ray or exam? What is the diagnosis? Has it changed? Sometimes, especially with head injuries, concussions are ever evolving. Sometimes they're fine. Sometimes they're not. What is the treatment plan and when is their next appointment? So those are largely important for um, reporting. Um, and then this last section here is for billing. So a large part of the consulting portion of my job is billing. So I do bill for my time. Anytime I make a phone call to the injured worker, to the provider, to the attorney, when I do the interview, that's um, I'm billing for all of my time. Anytime I go to a doctor's appointment, I document my travel and the, the amount of time I waited in the doctor's office, the amount of miles I drove, um, anytime I had to pay for parking, an office visit fee, things like that. I document because I am reimbursed by my company for those charges. Um, and I want to say personally for me, based on the on how much I drive and how much I'm meeting with clients, note, I only meet with them at doctor's appointments. I don't meet with them at home or anything like that. But usually each month it can range from about $2,000 or so and just fees that I'm getting reimbursed for. Um, and that number can drastically increase depending on how much I'm driving. So a large part of being a case manager is organization and networking, kind of um, really getting the care for the patient together, whether that be with a specialist or a hospital or a physician, whatever the case may be. So no, you don't need a specific certification. There are certifications that you can get like once you are a case manager, um, but other than having a nursing degree um, and the type of job or the job that you get will determine like, do they want you to have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, but there is no specific program that you have to have for case management.
Hey guys, so I'm back home from meeting with my clients and I'm eating some lunch from Chipotle and I have another really good question. How did you get started as a case manager? So I really wasn't looking specifically for case management when I got the job. Um, last year I was finishing up my travel nursing assignment and I knew I needed something a little bit more steady um, while I continue and finish out uh, FNP or nurse practitioner school and also something that allowed me to be there for my kids which i really really needed and still need um so i looked for some consulting jobs and i knew i wanted it to relate to nursing um so i basically i think i went on indeed and that was the, the easiest and best way and uh reached out to an insurance company i did view their requirements for the job and i think there was a five-year um experience part of that and obviously i haven't been doing case management for five years but i do have um a lot of experience in orthopedic care even before i started uh, working as a registered nurse and i think that that helps uh, tremendously with what i'm doing now so that would be a, a tip that i have for anyone who's looking to go into the field which i got quite a few questions about that so i'll go into that uh for the next part of this segment but for right now that's how i got started i searched for a job that i knew had some of the requirements that i was looking for more steady um, the type of pay that i wanted and the type of hours that i wanted to work um, so that i could finish nurse practitioner school and take care of my kids and still do something that i found enjoyable that was not in the hospital so this is a really good question. As an LPN to RN, how can I make myself more marketable as a new grad case manager? I have a couple of questions like this that pertain to being a new grad and um, becoming a case manager. Now, if you're an LPN to RN and you have some years of experience as an LPN or LVN, um, then I would definitely say you still have an excellent chance of becoming a case manager because you have some experience in nursing. If you are fresh out of nurse of nursing school and you've never been a nurse, never done any of the nursing stuff, I would say you definitely want to get at least one to two years of real nursing experience under your belt before you attempt um, this type of job because it's very complex. You have to really understand how the disease processes work, how um, you know the healthcare team works. To be able to know who to reach out to so you really want to have some years of experience under your belt that's the first part of this question okay so the second part of this question says um, how can i make myself more marketable as new grad case manager so basically use the experience that you have if you have several years of experience doing something that will pertain um, to the job that you are looking into then use that to your advantage for me personally, I have four years of um, orthopedic experience as a medical assistant that I was able to easily leverage during my interview with the manager. Um, my ability to drive and work was also good because I do need to be able to meet with clients. And then also the skills that I've learned both as a nurse and just in healthcare over the last 10 to 12 years that I've been in healthcare now um, as a medical assistant and ER tech and then a, a nurse. Those skills are transferable. Don't think that if you didn't do it as a nurse, um, that it may not apply to the job that you're looking for. And that's the biggest piece of advice I can give to you is keep those skills up to date. Always present them with your potential employer. So to make yourself more marketable, if I had to pick just a few skills, I would definitely say obviously communication skills is like one of the highest up there. You're going to need to communicate with a whole um, interpersonal team, a healthcare team to get your patient well again, right? So you're going to need to know who to reach out to, the treating provider, the specialist, um, the primary care doctor, the pharmacist. Like there's so many people on the team that you're going to need to communicate well with. Um, my second thing, the hugest thing to me personally is organization. You're going to need to keep yourself organized if you're doing this type of case management. Um, keep a planner, um, keep a calendar, make sure that you write yourself notes to follow up on certain things because if you get disorganized, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed. Um, so that would be uh, the two that I have really is organization, time management, and, and communication with other people. So this is a really good question. Can you do case management straight out of nursing school? Um, similar to my last response, you really want to have some experience under your belt with this. Now, if you are transitioning from like LPN to LVN, I mean LVN to uh, RN, then yes, if you have years of experience doing that, you might have everything that you need to um, become a case manager. But if you have no experience whatsoever in nursing, 
pre uh, previously, then no, you're going to need a couple of years of experience. You're going to need to understand the flow, um, what is needed. You're going to need to know who to follow up with. A lot of times, uh, doctors will just refer patients for this, that, and the third, and you need to know who to contact. You need to, you can learn all of these things, but you definitely want to have a little bit of experience as well. I have several of my patients who will call me and say, hey, I have this going on. And based on what they're telling me, I also need to know whether they need to go to the ER, whether they can follow up with their primary care doctor tomorrow. If it sounds like a DVT or cellulitis. So there's a couple of ways you can get into case management. If you're already working at a hospital and that's a goal that you've been trying to strive for at the hospital you work at, definitely just reach out to HR. Make sure you have the qualifications that you think you would need to get the position and go that route if you want to work in a hospital. If you don't want to work in a hospital, um, you can do what I did. Go on Indeed. Um, just start filling out stuff. LinkedIn is a super popular um source to be able to network and find jobs that way i actually did get a couple of offers from linkedin so if you have if you don't have a linkedin i would highly encourage you to make an account for linkedin um, and really put yourself out there in that aspect and play up the skills that you have learned and uh during your time at the bedside um my biggest piece of advice for bedside nurses who want to leave the bedside is to use every skill that you learned at the bedside to your advantage when it comes to um interviewing for non-bedside related uh, nursing jobs. So how much experience at the bedside do you recommend to work in case management? I would personally say at least a year. Um, certain jobs will tell you how much they want you to have, but at least a year under your belt. Um, two is preferable, but at least a year. Um, mind you, I had four years of orthopedic experience as a medical assistant, and then I also had um, a year of acute care in neurology for the brain, and then I still moonlight as um a nurse at a or an urgent care so i do have that critical care urgent care kind of aspect as well but just for the basics at least a year once you have at least a year go ahead and start looking around um you at that point have enough experience especially because when i graduated i worked at a level one trauma center that was a teaching hospital so it was already innate that i was going to have that um, interpersonal communication with the healthcare team and i was really able to use that to my advantage for this type of position so there are case managers for all kinds of fields, right? So I would encourage you, especially when you're working bedside, you're really just used to one type of case manager. Usually that's the discharge planner for like the whole unit or whatever the case may be. But there's so much more out there than just that one type of case management. For instance, my case management is a specific focus in risk management with injured workers, workers comp. I don't deal with any other type of case management. Obviously I have a hand in discharge planning if my patient is getting discharged from the hospital from an injury. However, you as an OB, that's great. If you are looking specifically to stay in OB, um, women's health, and you wanna do case management, then my advice to you would be to look that route, go that route. Um, they may love the experience you have um, in OB. It doesn't necessarily have to be case management experience, but if you have strong OB skills that they can transfer into a case manager role, that might be a route that you can take. So for instance, your OB experience is going to help your case management to look a lot different from other types of case management. For instance, you're going to be dealing with mother baby, you're going to be dealing with women's health. Um, so you're going to have that experience that other people won't have who haven't done OB. Um, so when it comes to case management and really um, being a part of a greater team to assist with whatever the case may be in this instance, maybe like mom and baby making sure they're okay, making sure they have the right supplies that they need um status post delivery um things like that that i personally do not have experience in that is where your strengths would be that is how you would market yourself um as a case manager for women's health and you would just use that to your advantage don't necessarily shy away from the fact that you don't have any case manager experience because you have ob experience um, and if you are a registered nurse with many years even better but always use what you have Hey, so you do not need a master's um, degree in nursing to become a case manager. Um, obviously, you can have a master's degree and still be a case manager, but that is not a requirement. Um, I encourage you to follow this link up here at nurse.org. Um, and this article specifically talks about the type of master's degrees for nursing that you can obtain. Um, and they specialize like CRNA is a very popular one for a registered nurse anesthetist. Um, and then you have like midwife and things like that. So those are different avenues that you can pursue under the master's degree 
for nursing. However, you do not need a master's degree to become a case manager. Hey, this is a really good question. How do you be, how do you go from bedside nurse to case management? Honestly, you just apply. Like there's no like line that's going to tell you, all right, you've had enough experience in nursing to go ahead and do the case management. Like there's nothing like that. You just have to really start putting yourself out there, have to commit to wanting to do it and then um, making sure you play up your skills and market yourselves accordingly so that you can get the position. But there is no line that's going to tell you you're ready to become a case manager. Um, it's just whenever you feel ready, go ahead and start putting yourself out there and really, um, you know, getting an idea of what to expect as a case manager. Hey, so this is a really good question. How can you advance in your career after being an RN case manager? So there's really no hierarchy um, like ADN, BSN, Masters. There's nothing like that for case management. Now, once you have become a case manager and have some experience, you can usually then apply for like certifications and things that um, are um, offered to case managers. So that's one way that you can increase your education as a case manager. But usually what it is, um, is the skills that you acquire as a case manager, you then would take to you in other type of manage managerial positions you may want to do in the future. I know personally for myself, like I said, I am in nurse practitioner school, um, specifically for family nurse practitioner. And like a lot of the skills and things that I'm doing are highly, highly transferable to that type of role. I'm going to need to know how to um, assess and then work with a team to get my patients does it pay well? So yes, obviously, um, I'm a mom, I have children. So that was a factor for me, you know, making sure that I'm well compensated for my time, um, all the stress I got to deal with, not with these injured workers and doctors and stuff like that. So um, obviously, this um, working for insurance, you always have to um, kind of expect that they usually do pay a little bit more than the average. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link nurse.org. Um, one more time up here so that you guys can see what the average nurse case manager makes. I think it's important to also keep in mind that this is generalized, very generalized. Um, I do work in Houston, Texas. It has a large medical center um, and the field nurse case manager for this insurance company was in very high demand. And with that being said, for my area, anywhere from 80 to $100,000 a year starting is um, pretty normal. Hello, so now I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to document the um, how the doctor's appointments went today. I went to two different ones um, this afternoon and this morning. So basically now I'm gonna go ahead and type out um, a little summary of the visit, how it went, what the outcome was, what the expectation will be as far as return to work um, and progression of the injury for my guys, my patients. Um, and then I send that to the adjuster on the insurance claim as well as the employer who um, has hired us to figure all this out for them. Um, and then I usually will submit, if I can get an office visit note today, I will submit that as well. Those usually don't come back for like a couple days to a week once the doctor has signed off on the note. And then the workers comp um, activity status, work status form, which is a legal document, they call that the DWC 73 form. I also submit that as well. Um, and that's what they use to kind of determine when they so rudely cut off. Anyways, that's what they use to determine um, when the injured worker will return to work and under what kind of conditions, for instance, any restrictions that the doctor has placed on the return to work. Um, no lifting more than 10 pounds, no driving, no running, whatever the case may be um, as it pertains to their job as also just activities of daily living. So if they say no driving and you drive at work, then cool, no driving at work, but that also means no driving at home. So these uh, restrictions apply across the board. And um, so it's the injured worker's job to kind of comply with those restrictions. And then the employer has an idea of where the um, injured worker is at as far as when they will be able to start doing those things again. Hey guys, so I just did my skincare routine. I'm about to do some homework for school and then hand the Instagram account back over to nurse.org. Um, there was one more question that I had had, which was about the stress of the job. And I'm assuming that that means compared to like bedside nursing. Um, I would say that it is less stressful in a lot of ways than bedside nursing. For me, um, playing into like hospital politics was a huge like ugh for me. Um, but it still has its own type of stress. 
as with anything, when you're dealing with patients and people, um, I think more so because in the hospital, at least they're in a controlled setting versus like the patients that I deal with for case management. Um, they kind of are doing their own thing. Um, luckily, a lot of my, my guys are compliant with the treatment plan. And so that makes it a lot easier to just kind of work with them. But some of them are not. They don't want to go back to work. They don't really care about getting better. And that doesn't ever help anything. I want to thank everyone for their questions and participation in today's videos. I really hope you enjoyed today's takeover and learned something about case management and what I do as a field case manager for an insurance company here in Houston, Texas. And I would encourage you once again to visit um, nurse.org for all of your nursing related questions. One thing that I really love about nurse.org and what really drew me to them and why I was so excited to partner with them today was because they offer so much value with their um, nursing career information and just all things nursing. So I would highly encourage you to visit nurse.org um, to learn more information if you're interested in nursing or if you're already a nurse and you want to maybe transition to a different type of nursing like case management or anything else. They have literally tons of information. It's all educational and fact checked. So I would highly encourage you to check them out. Bye guys.